Hello. Good afternoon. Um, okay, that's quite a big audience. So, um, why I'm starting with this, you know, Twitter, right? Um, so, this presentation, this talk, um, I'm giving it externally for the very first time. And honestly, I have concerns how you will perceive it. So, if you really hate it, please post something on my Twitter profile, or if you enjoy that, let me know. So, just to make sure that other people don't need to suffer in the same way later on as you did, okay? Um, th thank you for that, if you do that. Uh, I'll delete very bad comments. I, I hope I have admin rights there. Yeah, okay, get him to business then. Um, DevOps at scale at Bunny World. Um, quick agenda, as it formally is, is used to done. So, a few words about me. Um, I come from purely enterprise world. Um, as I say, I do DevOps for horses, not for unicorns, for horses, which means large clients at large company. Um, how, how many are you from kind of companies less than 10 people? There are a few hands. Then from 10 to 100? Yeah, the size of kind of IT engineers. 100 to 1,000? Yeah, okay. I'm coming from company which is 400,000 big. So you can try to imagine. Um, that's, that's the thing. And that's why I'm looking at different topics and having different talks about DevOps, DevOps at scale, technology, and so on, with clients basically every second day and with engineers on the field and so on. So moving forward, um, DevOps intro. I hope that today you have heard enough what is DevOps and so on and so on and so on. So everything, what you see on the screen, I will not be talking about that. Um, that's the whole point. Because quite often when I try to start talking with people about um, DevOps and different things, they start seeing it in the same way. They hear things they want to hear. So what I try to do is to do quick experiment analogy. Let's talk about something else which is not related to DevOps at all. And that's why, well, we'll talk about bunnies. Do you have children? Yeah, great. If you will not enjoy it, uh, I believe they will love it. We'll, we'll, we'll arrange. So, um, and about DevOps at scale in general. So, do, do you know what is DevOps at scale? Well, some people know s scaled Scrum, some talk about safe, but uh, a lot of people see it as, well, you have DevOps, company grows, you make big DevOps, right? And this is it. Um, well, is it really? That's, that's the question. So, how many have read this book? Mm, I see a few hands. Yeah, definitely must read a uh, book, but then what I was specifically looking in was practice how to do DevOps in large companies for large clients, for multi-speed moving companies and so on. Well, book is great, but unfortunately, I, I wouldn't agree that it covers it. I don't know your opinion, but not really. It talks about great DevOps practices. I believe it will be bestseller in 2017 if it hasn't happened already. Um, yeah, moving on. So, finally, welcome to Bunnyland. And meet delivery lead John. John has great idea. So in bunny world, logically, the best thing to sell are bunnies. 
But there is one small problem. Um, there are yellow bunnies and there are blue bunnies. No one knows how to make white bunny. So John is the magic guru of bunnies and somehow in his basement he figures out, yes, by applying some magic, whatever that means, he actually created white bunny. It really didn't take him long to find his first customer. On the same day, he met a small girl this size. Um, her name was Maze. Um, she had, I believe, a rich father or, or something like that. And she was ready to buy that bunny for any price. That was the best thing which, which is available in the bunny world. Um, additional detail, she was a smart girl. And she said, well, one is cool. I want 20 more. So John got his first business. Well, 20 bunnies, that's that's huge effort. So he found guys who know how to make yellow bunnies, neos, and taught them how to do this stuff. Well, things were a bit hectic, you know how it happens. Well, he taught them what he could and after three months, 20 bunnies were done. Good. Um, well, three months, they called Maze. Maze was, was jumping in the joy, of course. Everything great. She came over. He showed bunnies. Unfortunately, half of bunnies ran off. Well, that's what bunnies do, right? Well, she wasn't that happy anymore. She paid anyway. Well, 10 white bunnies. It's still big boom. John didn't ask what she did with those bunnies, um, but anyhow, they agreed on discount. But Maze, as being a smart girl, said, well, OK, I'm taking these. But then after three months, give me 100 bunnies. Well, John couldn't resist. Three months here, there, he'll manage. The only problem was, well, now team is professional. They can make 100 in three months. At least that's what he believes in. But there is that problem that they need to be contained somehow because they, they are running and, and so on. So he met a guy named Volya. Everyone knows one Volya. I believe. And Volya actually definitely was expert in containing bunnies. And he explained to John in simple words that he needs a crate and Volya can build it for him just to put bunnies in. Obviously, he needed a few more guys. And uh, since they needed to make 100 bunnies, so more Neos are needed, those guys who actually do the legwork. So John hired a few guys like himself, and they started, well, production. Things went quite well, um, and actually they managed to do it in three months, which is, well, well quite surprising. There, there was one small detail, one small issue. Bunnies were too big to put them in the crate. No one knows how it happened. Um, well, Volas made crate, so they did their job. And uh, since they were very proactive and so on, they said, we have a solution. Don't worry, we'll fix that. It took one week, and uh, they called Maze because, well, she's the money. And uh, John offered solution. Well, cut them in halves and put in the crate. Well, obviously, Maze wasn't happy about that. But then, but again, well, requirements weren't defined. No one says what, what kind, of, kind of bunnies. It was just white bunnies. So, well, in the halves, it's still one, one bunny. Well, it, it didn't really work out. So Maze was angry, 
and she proposed, okay, if you can deliver this in two months, I will pay. Well, John, as usual, couldn't resist. Well, client is client, money is money, uh, team is waiting salaries. So he thought about it and remember the guy from his childhood who was very structured, full of ideas, a bit snob probably. The guy was named Scott, but he was good on technology and understood how things work. Um, so he met the guy, Scott, which said, yes, let's do this, I love white bunnies as well. And what is needed is special machine, which will take white bunnies, put them automatically in the crate, and don't let them grow, because they are in the crate. So that should work. And that's what they did. Again, production. Actually, they managed to do it in three months, not two. Well, who cares? Um, good enough. But there was, again, one small issue. Um, well, bunnies, full crate of bunnies, everything fine, but crate is so heavy that uh, they, they can't actually deliver that to Maze. So they called her and said, well, come over. We have your stuff. Well, obviously, Maze couldn't resist. She came. The Pandora box was opened. And guess what? They all were so angry that, the, well, you, you get it, right? Um, of course, Scott, being a good snob guy and understanding things, said, well, no one ever said that those bunnies need to be nice. So, sorry. If you want that, put that in contract. Okay, well. So, again, well, Maze, Maze, Maze had uh, her business. She couldn't say no either. So, they agreed on new stuff. 100 bunnies, nice bunnies, in five months, and uh, Scott explained, well, it can't be done in, 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 in longer period because they need to, well, be nice and that will require additional steps and so on. So five months it is, should work. Again, there's an issue, how to make bunnies nice. And then John remembered his, well, childhood love, Angie. Angie was good on understanding what's right and what's wrong? That was her specialty. So she proposed a way that, yes, she could help. Um, she has friends, and they will be, well, testing bunnies. What, which ones are good, which ones are bad. Bad ones, you know what happens with bad ones. Um, should work. And obviously, they put her in the middle of most important process um, to test. One small detail, kind of unimportant, is that NGs started to make different graphs and started to really monitor how many bad bunnies uh, they, are, they are catching and, and improving all the time. They were very happy about their work. They loved it. So after, well, three months after the deadline, stuff was ready. Maze came, um, product was delivered, um, with one small issue, half of bunnies were dead. Again, guess what, was it said in requirements that they need to be alive? Of course, no. So, again, new deal, new agreement. If John can manage that 70% of bunnies are alive after six months and still 100 is delivered, then she will uh, agree. When, when she was leaving the room, she was, she was speaking with someone on the phone and saying something like, if anyone else would know how to make white bunnies, I, I would go to them without thinking. What John thought about that is, well, Great, actually. We are the only ones. Perfect. But they needed to manage somehow that problem with short-living bunnies. So they got Florence, who said, yes, 
Um, I'm a designer, I'm an architect, uh, I know how, how to make things. So she proposed that there need to be faces how things are done. Um, and she will be the one drawing designs and, and processes. Um, she promises that they will live longer. She can redesign the process. That's what they did. So Florence drawing, others making that step by step instead of all at, all at once. NG somewhere in the middle, boxes being made. Well, Florence got so crazy that she started to make new designs every second week. So, well, no one could really cope with her speed, so they made more lines and hired more people to make sure that they, they actually can, can keep those designs which work and work on better ones. After doing some math, they understood that they actually, with those parallel production lines, have improved their productivity by 30%. Well, everyone got a beer and pizza and everyone was very happy. Well, except, uh, except Volya. Um, well, he wasn't really needed anymore. Crates were done. So what's, what's the point of him? So, well, he, 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 let's call it disappeared. Yeah, so John saw that everything is fine. They are working. Um, took his vacation for two weeks somewhere in, in Hawaii. Get, uh, got great time. Came back and saw this. Well, it was, it was a war field. Um, few dead some left. Well, a nightmare. Um, first idea what John got in his mind was um, next time if I'm doing this, I should put them in different locations. That, that would solve this. Anyhow, but, but that was just an idea. Um, his childhood friend Martin called him just by accident. Um, the, the, the small freak genius. But he had such friend as well. And that guy said, come on, the, you, you don't get it. We need, we need DevOps culture, automation is the key. And John said, stop. Yes, yes, I know, I know what you mean. Um, let's do this. Um, how long it takes? Well, nine months um, to, to implement, well, continuous delivery and automation and stuff. And, and yes, okay, we'll get eight guys like you. Um, after a month, it should be ready. Well, Martin couldn't couldn't really say no because he understood that that uh, he hasn't found a job for a few months, um, and that's what they did. Well, they actually were some three four months late, um, but it was done. Hundred bunnies, call maze, maze. Well, it's it's been a few years. No one actually noticed how, how time is running. Um, Maze luckily picked up and, well, finally one good delivery. There was one uh, issue though. Um, she said that she will not come over. And if you can deliver that to my doorsteps, then fine. Martin said, no issue. I can do that with a cloud in minutes. And he did. Yes. No, no one cared how really, but the deal was, the, the great deal, if John can deliver 10 more crates like that in, in three years or something, then she will buy them for half price. Well, John didn't really have any other customer. He had big team working. Well, what he, well, and that's a big money. Of course, he agreed. So they continued working on it. Now they were putting stuff in Crate Plus Cloud. Um, no one knew really how it works, but Martin is the genius, the yellow guy. Everything went smoothly. They were ready to deliver. They tried to deliver. And for whatever reason, half of crates didn't really arrive to her doorstep. Um, Martin said that, sorry guys, at the beginning I said, this is not my expertise. Well, it was as it was. 
the maze, well, she paid for those which she got. She didn't pick up phone, she didn't care. John understood that his last, his only client is lost. He fainted, well, um, business is screwed, uh, everything is bad. But he got a dream of eight leg bunny. Let's, let's call it a horror. Um, yeah, that, and, and then he woke up and understood, well, th this is interesting, this, this could actually work. If we would make one bunny, um, we can do it on the spot and we have technology and everything. Without thinking too long, he started to make that from the very last bunny, uh, not bunny, but money he has. <laughs> That's what they did. Well, crate needed to be a bit bigger and Scott showed up and said, well, I can make it bigger. I know how things work now. Um, that's what they did. In one year, they actually made it. One bunny with eight legs. They called Maze, said, well, come, get all your friends. We have something what you haven't seen ever. And she came. Well, half of girls didn't really like it. Obviously, it's an eight-leg bunny, um, but some of them were just touching legs and saying, "Yes, yes, this this is the new business. This should work." So, but those who didn't like it made their complaints in a long list. So John collected the back backlog, went back to the team. They agreed that well, um, changing the bunny to change one leg will take some some three months, but we can do that. Um, let's try to, to do good business for those who weren't happy. Um, let's, let's change one leg. The problem was that, well, changing the, the swapping bunnies took them one week just, just to swap them. So girls came, of course, uh, one liked it, uh, one was was mad because her favorite bunny was simply somewhere in the bushes, um, but this is the way this this was the way to go. There were more requests about other legs, and they continued their work. Martin, well, not not Martin. John said to Scott that please use same tools as Martin does. Um, because he knows how to, how to do these things. Um, some Scots actually changed names to Martins. Um, so now everyone was Martin and, and Angie's and, and Neo's. It was a bit confusing. But uh, they managed to now swap a bunny in one day. Just, well, because Martin's tools and Martin's practices were applied. Good. Girls came. One was happy. One was in the middle. One, as usual, was looking at bushes. Um, that's the new business. But Maze, the, the, those are her friends. Maze di didn't come really. So John visited her personally and asked, what the hell? We, we are doing great business. No one is doing like us. Where is the problem? And she started talking about Netflani, Amazoni, Spotify, Googleani, and and now everyone was making white bunnies, a way faster than three months to change a leg. So John understood. Well, there's a problem. So he quickly took the the in bunny world there is internet. Yes, surprisingly, and he read what the hell these companies did. Um, and he understood the yeah, DevOps and stuff, and, and he did what he could. So, well, he removed some processes, mm, which were just making him slow. Um, Florence wasn't really needed with her designs, because they can do that by themselves. Also, Scott was kind of useless, because all job is done by, by Neos and Martins. Um, and they started, well, developing new leg. They finished in one week. One week. That was amazing. So again, they invited everyone, and, and there was big show. Um, something went wrong. The 
Big Bunny went, well, well, got a bit crazy. Luckily, Wolle showed up with big needle and killed the big beast. Done. Well, that was it. John was done. This, this doesn't work. DevOps doesn't work. Uh, nothing works really in this bunny world. So he sent everyone to vacation, uh, long vacation, and then unpaid vacation. Um, well, and one day he got his courage back and invited everyone, come, let's talk about it. He invited Mays to, to, to apologize. So, and at the meeting, before he actually started to talk, Martin showed up and started talking about Conway's law, about DevOps at scale, and no one understood him, but everyone was so done that after three hours of him talking about stuff, they said, yes, let's, let's do this. Yes, okay, okay. Who, who cares? We, we, we don't have salaries anyway, uh, and, and no jobs, because no one knows how to work for F f face bunny, um, they they don't know technology, so let's let's do what they can. Yeah, and what we came up, what what they came up with, is let's remove one leg and make a trench and make automation to attach the new leg to the bunny. Everyone was shocked by the idea itself, um, but bunny survived. And this seemed as good idea. Well, Martin said, easy, let's do that for all legs. Yeah, should work. And then Martin went even more crazy. He said that he has noticed that girls actually, well, Maze actually was, was joining the, t the team. Uh, she was interested, what's, what's the new crazy idea? That girls actually more often like to touch legs instead of feed that bunny. So they also started switching heads and everything. Um, why not? No one said that it's impossible and they proved it is possible. Now it was possible really to just flush it down the trench and it automatically gets attached to, to bunny parts. Perfect. They went one step further. They made a separate team which was responsible for making new trench designs. Well, Martin knows his stuff um, and actually it worked. Then Martin said, well, this is not enough. Let's, let's, uh, let's get together. Let's try to make special events where we experiment even further in a ways which no one knows. Um, some other events were made specifically where only Neos met or only Wolias met and just talked about stuff. Well, talked about tails and legs and heads. Um, people enjoyed that, really, they enjoyed that. At one of those events, someone came up with the idea that they could put sensors in, in bunnies' legs just to understand how often and how, how much how, how many pushes there are on leg and so on. Those ones which they don't really like, they, they could remove them, they could start to understand, well, do, doing some, some monitoring, how, how popular that is, which legs are more popular, which are less, um, well, and so on, and so on. Well, I, I guess you, you are noticing that I'm, I'm getting to happy end, and of course they got more and more customers. They started experimenting with, with cats in some other land, which also worked quite well. Um, that, that was it. No one worked for Amazoni anymore. They all came to John's world. So that's the question about DevOps and scale. Um, how many ways you can go wrong, actually. So is that the right way? Um, I'd say no. A very childish diagram because I am, I guess, over, always overdressed and chill, child in my heart. Um, small teams. Mm. Well, scrum teams, Kanban teams, depends what you need. 
token over APIs, for big monsters still there is ESB, there, there is the backend, there sometimes is a mainframe, but there are ways, there are ways. And saying that DevOps at scale is not possible for DevOps for horses, well, the horses, um, I have seen ways. It is possible. I guess that's it from me today. I hope you enjoyed parts of it. We have two minutes, I guess. <laughs> that's it. And post your bad, bad comment, please. <laughs> does, anybody, does anybody have any questions? Yes, please. Who was Scott? Who was who? Scott. Scott was... Um, he was changing his profession a little bit. Um, he was a bit of security guy who is engineer at the same time and loves QA. More questions? Please don't ask about drugs involved. <laughs> <laughs> okay then. Um, I'm hoping to re publish a book with the same story <laughs> for children. <laughs> I'm still thinking about it, but yeah. This, this was the analogy, yeah. Okay, thank you.